morning, everybody. It is April 5th. It's about 7.40 in the morning. I've been up since, I don't know, about four. We had an earthquake here in Los Angeles. Wasn't a big one, but um, I just, for some reason, I, I kind of, I must have woken up when it was happening, but it feels like I was up at just be, when it started. Hard to tell when you're in that kind of a headspace when those things, but felt this rolling going through the house and uh, been through a couple of big quakes in L.A., that's for sure. So this wasn't one of those, but it was definitely a quake last night in the or the wee hours of the morning. Um, so I'm, I've been up for a while. I just figure let's just jump in here because I'm going to be heading back to rehearsal again. We had a great time yesterday. It was so great to see the guys get all set up in there and... Uh, it, it, it was funny, at, at the end of the rehearsal, the one thing that we all commented, Russ didn't comment on it, but the other, all the rest of us kind of, it was so weird playing standing up. We've all been so used to just sitting and, and practicing and playing and doing what we do, to actually stand up and feel the weight of that instrument again on your shoulder and your back. was <laughs> It was weird, you know, never felt that before, just because I've never gone this long without gigging and standing and playing but it was great uh, and it was amazing how quickly we got, everybody got back in the saddle um we've got to do a video um for a radio for a it's actually for a radio station in in new york one of the big stations and they wanted us to do a live performance of can't stop progress you know and i kept i kept going well, why the hell would we do that for a radio show would we do this but um but apparently they want to do some streaming. They want to do whatever's going on. So the first thing we did was jumped into Can't Stop Progress. And man, it felt like the day we recorded it. It sounded sounded great. I think the thing that'll be, you know, the critical part is is just to get voices back up uh, in, into shape. Because, that you know, it's, playing's one thing, but getting your, your vocal chops back up to speed. It'll take a little bit longer, but the guy sounded good yesterday. I mean, I'm not a sing. I can sing some backup, but I'm not. I'm not a lead singer, so I just uh, said whatever you guys need to do. So we did that, and then on the uh, on the movie front, on the documentary front, they've asked for a song for the closing credits of the movie. And yesterday was the first time that we've run this new song um, called "Skin in the Game," and uh, it is a kick-ass. And it's going to be an amazing way to and this documentary to have this going on. So we're actually going in, um, I think we're going to Steve's house, Postel's house, because he's got a studio there, and, and I think we're gonna go down there next week, uh, hopefully, or the week after, and record this song, and get that done, and turn it into uh, the guys uh, that are doing the editing. And then um, We'll be heading into A and M or Henson or whatever you, Charlie Chaplin, whatever you want to call that, the studios, um, in about a week to do our roundtable uh, storytelling session, which will be great. That'll be that'll be a fun part of the movie, just to have a whole pile of stories coming out of everybody, and that's the way to do it. You know, you just uh, get everybody together, throw some food down and some drink or whatever, and. Uh, roll cameras and whatever happens, happens. But it's such a unique cast of characters. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, so that's that's good, so we're heading back today. I've got some stuff I'm gonna do this morning. I have to, I'm gonna take a run, to, I think, to the post office and to the nursery before I leave for work. But I've gotta be there at noon, so I'm gonna to have to leave about 11.15. So I just thought, hell, I'm up. Let's, let's, let's have uh, a hang at this point. Yeah, let's see. Oh, one thing I'm going to ask, uh, and I'll say it early in case people bail in the middle of this. Um, if possible, I would love it if uh, anybody who hasn't done it, if you could go to the Immediate Families YouTube channel and subscribe. Doesn't cost anything, but it would really. We're trying. We're trying to move numbers up and and really make this a really viable space. And there's you know lots of good stuff going on. We're really working social media now with Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all the different formats of it, on Spotify and 
and all this stuff that I really don't have a clue. Uh, but if you could go to our page and hit subscribe, it would be much appreciated. I'd really love it. So, Okay, so um, it was, it's so funny. When I was driving home last night uh, from the rehearsal, um, oh, it was good. On the way home, because at the rehearsal, I got a phone call from Mike DeTemple, who's, who was working on my old Peace Love bass, my original bass, because... Uh, uh, things were funky and you know, one of the pots was shot and all this and I love using that bass so he called me at during the rehearsal and said it's done got it it's finished up so I made a detour on my way home last night and picked up the bass and it, it sounds great um, it hadn't been adjusted or intonated probably for 30 years and he said needs it so uh, he he went into it and uh tweaked the neck a bit and uh, and adjusted the bridge, put in the new pot, cleaned everything out on it, and I went over there and plugged it in. And, man, oh, God, it sounds great. I'm going to use that on some of the upcoming videos when I'm playing. I'm going to go back to that rascal. And we're going to be fi filming some stuff on the day that we're doing our roundtable at A&M, or Hanson or Chaplin. Uh, and... The stuff that they want uh, to be filming, it's individual stuff, little snippets and stuff, is from like 70 to 74 period. And that's the base I used during all that period before Frankenstein was made. So I'm really glad I got it back and I'll be able to take that into the studio and play that. So that's that. So I'm on my way home last night, though, on my detour, I'm listening uh, to Sirius Radio and James Taylor comes on. On, on there, it was on the Sinatra channel, but it was some stuff that where he's been delving into the. Uh, I think he was doing "Baby, It's Cold Outside," and um, so I was listening, you know, to that. And I've been doing James, and I was thinking about some stuff from "Never Die Young" and um, um, "Dad Loves His Work." And uh, there's some more songs there I'm going to visit real soon. And then I've been talking about uh, Kate taylor his sister when we did her sister kate album and that we've been in the studio and we just finished her new album 50 years later and i thought well maybe i'll visit livingston taylor for a moment here and and uh and indulge in the in the taylor clan i never did anything with alex uh, alex uh, the oldest brother who passed away many years ago was kind of a rough and tumble blues cat and he had his own scene going on. So I, you know, when I jumped into the family, it was just uh, James and, and Kate. And then I did some stuff with uh, Livingston over the years. So, um, copious notes, copious notes. So I put together this thing because uh, in 2005, I went down to Nashville to do an album, work on an album with, with Livingston Taylor. And it's called There You Are Again is the album. And um, Glenn Rosenstein produced it, and I got to know Glenn um, doing uh, uh, an album with an another really wonderful artist, Joshua Cadison. I'll probably visit some stuff we did with Joshua. And uh, hold on, let me get this. Talking and... The, oh, crap, hold on, hold on, the computer. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully it's all still working. Start talking in there. I've got the thing where it's not supposed to shut down, but it just does it on its own no matter what. Okay, so that was Joshua Cadison. So I'll be visiting Joshua too. And if you don't know Joshua's work, he's really a good, another fine artist. So I'll do that. Um, so Glenn Rosenstein produced this and Steve Beicher engineered it. Um, his wife, Tracy... I, I got to know very early on in Nashville, and she contracted all of the contemporary Christian projects that I did uh, in Nashville. And Steve's a fabulous engineer, uh, so and I did lots of albums with Steve. And th this was uh, ultimately um, mixed and mastered by the great George Massenberg. So um, the first song I'm going to play is called "I'll Be There," and the band <laughs> the band on this stuff was just like ridiculous. It's uh, it's myself, Steve Gadd on drums, Chris Rodriguez and Vince Gill on electric guitars, um, Gary Corbett on B3 organ, Aubrey Haney on mandolin, Paul Franklin on steel, 
uh, Shane Keister on keyboards, and the back, background singers on this uh, aren't bad. It's Kate Taylor, Pam Tillis, and James Taylor. And uh, the acoustic guitars on this are James and Livingston. It's funny when I see like Paul, when I do these things with Paul Franklin, I remember, I think it was when I was um, working on, um, let's see, which album was it? No. God, oh, God, I'm blanking here. So hold on. Sec, 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 early morning. Um, I'll get back to that story. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, you know, you get those moments every once in a while. But here's I'll Be There. Let me play a song for you. This is, you know, Liv is, it, it, it's an interesting thing. There's this kind of like, you know, like with James, I always hated the fact that they always talked about James was this really mellow guy. Because when James wanted to rock, he could kick some serious ass, especially live. And if you ever wonder about that, go pull up the um, James Taylor Blossom flag tour video on YouTube, the concert from uh, 1979, I believe it was, 78 or 79. Man, dude's all over the state. He's kicking some serious butt. But for the most part, he got known for these, you know, more of a balladeer and... Uh, and then you had Kate, who was just kind of like going down almost like the Janis Joplin road. She's like, a, she's a feisty little fart. Um, and somewhere in the middle is, was Livingston. Livingston really covers all the gamut, um, but really an interesting lyricist um, and an interesting cat. I mean, he's, he's been a, an educator. I mean, he has his, his cult followings. He never hit that plateau that, that James did, and that's probably a lot of that's probably due to being the younger brother. Had maybe he been the older brother, who knows what would have happened with that. But he's an incredibly valid, wonderful artist. And um, there's a really great track um, uh, called, I think it's called Tell Jesus, um, that's uh, it's an all a cappella track on this album with Livingston and, and the, the incredible vocal group Take Six. Um, so that's worth checking out. This album's worth checking out. I did one song from it, I think, uh, very early on in the videos. Uh, I think it was called If I Were a Cowboy. And uh, I've used that when I've done clinics and I show it. And uh, it's, it's so incredibly simple. You know, and all these people are saying, yeah, man, you and like Steve Gadd, man, it's got to be like, man. I, I go, no, no, this is like... This is just an easy little song and stuff. But when you listen to like just the way Gad plays it, the way we approached it, it's uh, it's pretty pretty cool. Um, but this one is called uh, "There I'll Be." So let me play a song before my you know, teeth fall out from talking here. So let's go for it here. This revolutionary oh, device naturally loosens you know, the. Rebooting it suddenly pulled up a commercial. You breathe easier and. You know, I just want to.
want to make a bet, win, place, or show. You can set it all on me. Lay your hands on the promised land. Look up and there I'll be. When you lay your hands on the promised land, look up and there I'll be. So it's always interesting with families. You know, I mean, when you listen, there's, there's like James, Kate, Huey, the youngest brother, Liv. I mean, they all have their unique voices. Um, Hugh is the one who really never pursued it. He's, he's had all kind of other, you know, things in his life. But he's also, you know, they, they all, behind the doors, everybody goes, oh, he's really the best singer of the bunch. Um, but... Um, but just there's a timber and a nuance in their voices where you just, you can hear them. I mean, I can hear James in the background so easily on this. And then you hear the, the things that Liv does. <clears throat> and it's so Taylor-esque. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing to me when, you, when I've been around, you know, families like this and you just kind of go, I'm going to, I played along. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, comes up yeah if I, um i i did this i wasn't going to do this song um but I, I did this on an earlier one where i played along on the video that one i played with but i was just going to play it as you know comparative things about you know when people talk about they a lot of people think that being really intense and pulling lots of chops and stuff is really what makes for a great player um and this is um the one i said wish i were a cowboy and like Steve Gadd and I just settled into this one. And it's just, it's, I just want to play this for you. I wasn't going to, but here it goes. A two, one, two, three. I wish I were a cowboy Riding my horse through the wide open spaces and If you like cowboys Maybe you'd like me too That Taylor nuance in her I wish I were a rain man Sprinkling water on all of those faces and If you were thirsty
I've done that, like when I go to clinics, you know, and then people say, I said, that's Steve Gadd playing drums on that. And they're, they're, they're expecting, because Steve's one of the great drummers in the world. I mean, he's been like one of the great drummers forever. Yeah, and he just listens to the song and he goes, no, it just needs brushes a little, he'll just tap it through and just set the, you know, and that's what I love is, is that kind of a thing where people's expectations are always, you know, like, you know, I see so many videos like on YouTube and everybody's, man, just whipping it out, just throwing er down everything they've got. And you go, man, sometimes just the simplest things are the ones that, that touch you. And I remember I was doing a uh, bass camp for Warwick uh, in Germany. It was tons of bass players uh, on this thing, and everybody was doing clinics. And it was amazing. I mean, I was, I was sitting there watching Steve Bailey's clinic. Then I would go see Alfonso Johnson's clinic, then Rhonda Smith's clinic. And everybody was so informative and so interesting on this thing. And when I was doing, when I did mine, you know, a lot of them got into deeply technical things. And, and I kind of got into just a song and all this. And it was really something because I, I, I sat there and did this song, If I Were a Cowboy, and played along with it. And when I, when I looked up, uh, there was this one um, girl uh, uh, on there, uh, Suzanne, Suzanne uh, is, is her name, I think, and she's from Germany. But I looked up and she was crying. I mean, she said, you know, this is one of the first songs that that people have played this week that just touched her, just in its its tenderness and simplicity, because everybody was really, you know, putting it out there. And not to deny any of it, but it was just interesting when I kind of looked and said, you okay? And she said, man, that's, that song really got to me. So it was really, it was, that was a cool moment on this. But, you know, uh, it's just, I, I hear these, um, this timber in voice and it's it's just these nuances they're so subtle but you know, every once in a while he would you know live says sing something and i go it sounds just like james and uh and then you hear them blending in the background parts and it's fascinating to me i just uh, maybe to me oh also i was going to say i i it was it was the gail davies album gail was one of the great artists of nashville and i was co-producing her album with her and i was staying in this the Hall of Fame Hotel uh, in Nashville, which we would all call the Hall of Shame. It was a really funky joint. But I remember getting back uh, from one of the sessions, and uh, there was a band playing in, 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 the, in the lobby bar. And I remember, so I stopped for a while and listened, and I hear this burning guitar solo, unbelievable guitar solo. And I look over, and the guitar player's not playing. And I go, what the hell's going on? And I look over, and it's the steel player. And uh, as soon as they finished, I went over and introduced myself, and it was Paul Franklin. And it was early in Paul's career, and he was just playing the club. And I looked at him, I said, what are you doing tomorrow? And he goes, well, I, 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 I said, you're hired. <laughs> just brought him in on Gail's project. And uh, he's been one of the major um, steel players, he, they ended up joining Dire Straits and went on the road with Knopfler and, and he's done, he's one of the major forces in, in contemporary, um, especially uh, country music. So many records you would ever see would have Paul Franklin's name on them. Um, so that was, that was really fun though. But so this, I'm going to do one other song here. Um, this is really very cool. I, I love this song. When we were working it up, it was a, it was a, it was a challenge because it's really got a lot of interesting nuances in it. But this, the song is just called Yes. Um, and so the band on this one is myself and Steve Gadd, George Marinelli on electric guitar. Um, and George, I believe, was uh, in um, Bruce Hornsby's band. Um, he did, a, he at one point lived in Los Angeles and did a number of sessions out here. Uh, 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 Jeff, um, Mir uh, I think it's um, Miranoff uh, on acoustic guitar, um, Shane Keister on, on piano, and Matt Rawlings on keys, uh, Bashiri Johnson and Ken Lewis on percussion. Uh, Shane, I mean, I've done a lot with Matt Rawlings over the years. The first album we did together was Lyle Lovett's Large Band, but he's like ridiculous, so good. And Shane is another like incredible keyboard player, and I've done a lot of projects with him over the years. On um, the background um, vocals on this are Lisa Cochran and Maribeth Jordan and Tim Davis, and the horn section was arranged by Jimmy Vivino, who was the, the guitarist on the Conan show. And he does all kinds of stuff, and he's in the Fab Faux 
with Will Lee, and that's the, like a Beatles tribute group, and he's amazing. And Jerry Vivino is on tenor sax, Lou Soloff is on trumpet, and Rich Rosenberg is on trombone. And this, and this is a fun track. I really love this one, so I'm going to go ahead and play this for you now and stop talking. Here we go. <laughs> fun tune really a fun tune god i love playing songs like that you know those are the ones that take a little extra time when you're working them up just finding all the parts and dialing it all in but when then it when it happens it usually happens in a pretty quick take um at that point just because you've you're there and you want to capture it while it's still fresh you don't want to be intellectualizing it too much you want to just re be responding to it, which is one of the problems with a lot of music is it gets so bogged down in prep that by the time you actually get to the takes, you're completely burned out with it. Um, so that was that was a nice one to have something that had that much nuance in it, but we still caught it really, really fresh. So that's Livingston Taylor, and um, and um, There I'll Be is the name of the album. There's a bunch of great songs, and there's other tracks. With the great Glenn Wharf is playing bass on some of the tracks, and um, Tommy Sims 
I think is on a couple of the tracks on it. Is another amazing bass player. I mean, they really, you know, put together a couple of some several different rhythm sections on this. That uh, I think uh, Chad Cromwell's playing drums on some of the other stuff that I didn't do with Gad, and um, he's another one who's just a great musician. Um, so there's a wealth of great musicians in this world, and that's one of the exciting parts of being a studio player is you get exposed to lots and lots of other musicians as compared to if you were in a band and your world kind of just revolved around your group of people. Um, I feel really fortunate all the time that I've had the uh, opportunity to play with some of the most unbelievably great gifted musicians ever. And, uh, and, uh, and I get to go do it again today. I get to be with the immediate family. So, so I'm looking forward. We had so much fun again yesterday. It was really great. So uh, I'm going to get going. I noticed it is now a little after 8 o'clock, and I think the nursery opened at 8 o'clock, and there's something I want to pick up over there. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> run over and get that so I can work with it in the morning tomorrow and have it here, and let's see. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's about it. I wish everybody a wonderful day, and... Um, Puppies are still sleeping. I can probably go to the nursery and get back before they wake up, you know, make them get them breakfast together. Um, again, every day, God, I'll be glad when the time comes that I don't have to say this, but I am not going to stop saying this until this is all behind us. But thank you so much to all of the people that are teachers, healthcare workers, people that are making work in the supermarkets and in every, every situation. I mean, things are in theory getting better, but it can easily turn around by irresponsibility and go really dark again. So let's be careful, but thank you all those people who are working so hard every day in my hearts with people that are still being intubated, that are in the hospitals, that are struggling to get through this. Um, man, I, you know, it seems like every week I'm finding out about other people I know that are sick or have passed away. It's like, really? been a rough one. So take good care of yourselves, take good care of your friends and family, and just be smart and be responsible, and we will get through this. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all tomorrow. I went to Nashville, and all of a sudden, I'm, it's a y'all. So I'll see everybody tomorrow, and uh, and we'll have another uh, moment together. And thanks for all the support. I, 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 you know, when Somebody wrote about me not playing enough on this, and everybody jumped in and was really kind. And I, I appreciate it because I want to have as much diversity and different things to do on this channel. But uh, to get up every day and learn a new song, relearn a song, and do all that, that's really arduous. And things like this song, like this last song, yes, there would be no way I would sit here and learn that, that part because that took, you know, that was a lot of work involved in putting that together. I'd rather be fanboy and sit back and listen to the track in its entirety and not focus on me, but listen to really the quality of, of musicians playing together and singing together. So that's that. Enough of, enough of my pedestal. I will see you tomorrow. Okie dokie. Bye-bye.